Got ants in your pants? What the fuck do you want to talk to me about? I can't believe well, I'm here. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? You know, give yourselves a title. Just for the warning. We, we literally just go in, we sit down, and we record. How come he doesn't have a good? Does he have a better mic or something? No, actually, you have yeah. a better mic than all of us. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. You do sound nice. Yeah. <laughs> Your mic is like the, that, the uh, best mic. Nice I'm going to get closer to there, Pete. There, <laughs> there you go. That's See, that's what you need to do. My name's Eric Forcell. Uh, I've been given the nice, great pleasure to be full-time faculty at Orange Coast College Woo-hoo. in the film and TV department. Um, you have been my student mm-hmm. a couple times. A couple times, yeah. Um, and Michael and I have been friends for two decades now. Why do you got to put it like that? How did you two guys I'm just how trying did you to guys keep track. Two how decades, d- wow. Yeah, how did you guys meet? Oh, God. Oh, let me tell the story. <laughs> Fuck, I'm screwed. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're both Art Center alum. Okay. And my first semester at Art Center back in 2002, in the summer of 2002, I believe it was your final semester. Yes. Okay. So the way they kind of have it set up at Art Center is they encourage you to start working on shoots as soon as you get in there. So as soon as you, you know, you don't even know what you're doing. Right. Uh, directors who are shooting their portfolio, they're crewing up and then they come to beginning classes and they try to, you know, recruit as many people as possible. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know what to do. And Eric happened, I think he was the gaffer or the key grip. I'm not sure. One of the two positions. No, it was yeah. probably lighting. It was probably Yeah, so, okay, lighting. so he was the gaffer. Yeah, it must have been because <laughs> you're going to see where the story goes. <laughs> so I remember it was like a 5 a.m. call time, and, you know, we're there. I mean, it's freezing. We're so, I don't even know where we were exactly, but it seems like we're a little further away. Working nights. Yeah, it, yeah. And Eric rolled up in his truck with his gloves on already, hops out and he's like what the hell are you guys standing around for come on let's get to work i was like oh who the hell is this asshole okay (laughs) so you know we're very different how i remember it that's not how i'm telling listen to me i'm telling you the truth so you know you're there trying to figure out how to use a c-stand because you haven't been trained on any of this stuff and you got all these cables everywhere and they're all different sizes and um I start wrapping some, I'm grabbing some cables and he says, what are you doing? And I said, oh, uh, that guy said he wanted some of these uh, stingers. He's like, yeah. He's like, why are they wrapped like that? I'm like, oh, because I had to pull them apart. He's like, who taught you how to wrap cable? Uh, Nobody. (laughs) Come here. And he grabs the cable out from my hand and he's like, all right, I'm going to show this in one time and I expect you to get it down. I did not say Over, that. under, I... over. And he does it so fast. And I'm like, what the hell is he doing? That's not quite how I remember it, but. <laughs> That's how I remember it. Scared to death of this guy. Well, I guess you never forgot. I never did. <laughs> And, and I, I, that's like one of the first things I teach the students when they get into my class. Because I don't want them to run into someone like you on set. I'm trying to think what I, it, I remember the first day I met you. Well, you brought him into class. And like, oh. yeah, yeah, you brought him into class to teach, um, Chris, was it Chris, Christina's class? Or Chris, Kristen's class? I remember. Oh, well, when I saw editing, editing 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't editing. It was film 110. Film, film 110. So yeah. Film 110. And he came in, sub in, yeah, sub in, and, and like just all the knowledge that he had. And we we're like all probies. Like we don't know anything. And you just saying like, you guys know what a C-stand is? And we're like, no. Do you know what this is? No. Do you know what this is? Okay. He's like, let me tell you. And it's, I was just, my mind was just blown. That was the class where, okay, where, where I didn't have a meltdown exactly, but I did. <laughs> no, nah, I, it's, I had it. came close. Well, I came close because I had a student that was in the back who was like, you know, you're talking about all this professional stuff. And what if we just want to shoot for YouTube or something like that? Do you remember? No, do you, don't, you don't, don't remember this that. conversation? No. And everyone's like, you know, looking at him. Then they look at me. And, and I said, well, 
I go, if you want to shoot, do YouTube videos or TikTok videos, whatever you want to do. I said, that's fine. I said, TikTok but, wasn't back then, though. Okay. Or whatever. <laughs> Snap, yeah. Snap, Snapchat, Snapchat. Whatever. <laughs> whatever the you kids were watching Vines. back then. That was only four years ago. Yeah, but TikTok hasn't been in, wasn't invented by that. that oh time. yeah, it was. No, it was. You just didn't have access to it, but it was available. <laughs> trust me. In China, probably, but not here. Oh, okay, well, I think we better fact check that. But I'm pretty sure it wasn't around. <laughs> anyway, he said something, and I said, "Listen, I said, the whole purpose of coming to school is to kind of get that type of education. So if you leave here and you go work on a professional set, you're right, going to you understand how everything works." I go, "Why else are you here?" Because he was questioning the fact that I was bringing up all these kind of tools and things that we use. and You know, fo- follow-up story. It's interesting because when I came up to you and I was like, oh, I want, I want like Michael to come like teach our class, right? And you're like, well, you know, there are some students that come here and may not know anything about, you know, filmmaking. So it's kind of, you know, we want to, you know, ease them in so they don't feel worried or, you know, anxious or like. Is that why you guys well, moved I mean, me out of the Film 110 class? <laughs> no, no, I, no. I mean, there are a lot of moving parts when you're trying to schedule a thing like you know we have to do but uh no we we uh that's i'm still stuck on the fact that somebody's upset about seeing a c-stand i mean you go to that tool every time oh it's i don't i i mean it's like a contractor and a hammer i mean even if you're making tiktok don't you want a light don't you want a mic? Or don't, don't you, you want the want, phone to be on the Don't you want up? a stand? Yeah, I mean, yeah. don't you want to not have to like hold yourself in selfie mode? I mean, yeah. something. I mean, it's just Well, that's why you see why I almost had a meltdown. So, I mean, community college has taught me to be um not surprised when there is this wide range of experience. And right. Nobody I mean, I have you've had people that have never touched a camera yeah, yeah. ever. So, you know, that's not going to be the same as somebody that's been given an iPad as they were a child. And now through high school, all the four years, they've been doing video Lord, stuff. Yeah. And, like, it's it's kind of awesome that we have this range, too, because it all ends up being relative, you know, at, at least so far. I hope you feel similarly. Yeah, to, yeah, I think uh, so. <clears throat> I, you know, I'm actually pretty shocked on when I see some students come in who have the experience they do because they had four years of video production at a high school mm-hmm. my high school didn't have that uh, i didn't either what I, what'd you guys do in high school got in trouble <laughs> i i was bad in math so i had to like catch up <laughs> i barely graduated <laughs> did you really yeah Is that, i think that's very common in film like you know well i mean i i just don't i never adjusted to school like i just i wasn't i didn't have a school mindset to, yeah. you know to do all this you know GD high school stuff is and, a terrible phase for most of us but, i mean it really is but i did love the program i mean i was lucky enough to have the program that i was in which was technical theater and we were we were like us students were building sets for shows for main stage shows mm. Like Phantom of the Opera, Saigon, you know what I mean? Where'd you go to high school? Huntington Beach High School. Oh, okay. Edison or no, eight, the Oilers, right? The Oilers, yeah. yeah. Down, okay. I used to skateboard there. We're not allowed to skateboard on Yeah, campus. probably because of us, yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Eric. I know. How did you guys get into Orange OCC to teach? Like, where, where, what drove you to become, uh, wanting to become a teacher? Um, you start. No, you have. <laughs> Well, you have to start because it leads uh, into me. Cause well, he was... it, it's okay. I'll I'll try to summarize it to where it's not, not you know dull. But um, at Art Center, I was given some opportunities, and I was working, you know, while I was going to school there. Uh, for I was doing things for Newport Beach Film Festival, mm-hmm. programming, and you know, recruiting stuff and trying to build events and whatnot, and. Anyway, I'm through all through that. I met my would be mentor, and it was a qu- quick, fun lesson. You know, he really took an interest in me because I think he liked, um, you know, educating. And it wasn't like a formal thing at all. It was like he just he take my phone call. So right. you know, it was really just he was open minded about being being involved with education and he always had been through you know his high level do we get a name when he's not working when he wasn't working he was like in charge of the education committee for the ASC and you know focusing his time on events and schools and 
trying to really give back. So he taught me give back um, pretty early on into our friendship. Um, and then, you know, and, he, and then it came like, this is almost more important. This is like life mm-hmm. top tier in, you know, in philosophies. Yeah. Everything else is like less than this. I mean, you know, give back anything that you've been taught by someone that you, you know, value and appreciate or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you've got specialized knowledge. It does the world no good if it's just you. You give it, yeah. <laughs> try yeah. to, you know, funnel that around. So I was I was lucky enough to be um, allowed to be friends with Mr. Laszlo Kovacs, ASC, and um, I got to be his friend, you know, for about six, almost seven years, up until he passed away. And he was super cool. He was mm-hmm. like, he was he was cool. I was like the best essence I can describe him. He was just a cool guy. You can see why everybody wanted him. You can see why. He was, um, you know, respected by producers and sought out by directors, and then talent loved him too. Um, so anyway, he taught me to give back. Mm-hmm. I finished school, um, try a bunch of things, as I'm sure you did, as I'm sure you are. Mm-hmm. You try, you scramble, and you're clawing your way any direction you can get. Um, did not have so many glamorous jobs, for sure. And then a guy named Jim Engelhart. <laughs> and it's, I'm assuming Michael knows him. A guy named Jing, Jim Engelhart, who sadly passed away just a, a little bit, a, a few years ago. Um, he, That's not why I was laughing. I, no, I, no, 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 no. I, course, I, he, course. I didn't know he died. Jim was a, a, a really enthusiastic writer. Mm-hmm. And he was full-time faculty at Art Center. And everybody that was in when we were there had to go through at least two levels with Jim, mm-hmm. maybe three, if you really wanted to write. I think, you know, there was, I think, three levels of writing. I, he didn't yeah. teach writing um, when I was going through. Okay, so he maybe was doing other class and like Mike, P- possibly, Mike Onaman yeah. and I can't remember. Who was the other guy that... Well, there's... Um, you know him. You knew him. It was Brad Saunders. That's the one. So And then Ron Osborne taught. There were a couple different ways to go if you were a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So Jim was like who all of the people who don't really want to be writers get to, to, and that was me. Anyway, Jim and I, like, oddly stayed in touch Hmm. after I finished. Like, hey, how you doing? Emails. and, And then one day he's like, hey, it's been a while since we talked, you know, da, da, da. Uh, Do you have any interest... There's a, a guy named Phil Boland looking to hire a part-time faculty mm-hmm. over at Long oh. Beach City College where he was, you know, kind of the new formed department chair in this, you know, small program that they've been trying to get. So anyway, I, I apply and I somehow get considered and, and get, get a gig to teach one class. And what, that, what that was my start. It was like our equivalent of film, film production film. one. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I think it was called film 20. You know, the right. numbering was different. But, you know, the basic fundamental video making class. And I really struggled with that uh, institution and that program because it was it felt like they didn't really care a whole lot about, you know, growing it mm-hmm. or it was more of an, a little side dish or an afterthought. So. Right. I taught there for maybe two or three semesters. And remember, I had been an alum. I went to OCC as a student. So I had a degree and I still had, you know, connections to my instructors. So basically, I teach there for three semesters until the department chair is this, you know, kind of difficult woman who's like, Eric, sorry, we don't have any assignment for you. And in my head, I'm like, cool. (laughs) I don't really want to be here. Um, Luckily, like a few weeks before that end of that term, Bob Lazarus, who I think you knew, mm-hmm. or maybe not, oh, no. he was he was gone. Anyway, Bob was the department chair uh, before me at o- OCC, full time faculty. He mm-hmm. had um, been referred to me, and I think he sent me a message of like, "Hey, would you like to have a conversation?" Mm-hmm. Bob basically invites me to have a meeting and was like, we have this opening, right. you know, would you do it? And it was like for Film Prod 1. And right. it, it was a different name at that time. So I'm like, sure. 
And then I, I think I ended up teaching, or maybe it was, yeah, it was one semester where I was finishing Long Beach and starting OCC. So I had two oh, schools overlapped in one term, and I okay. was like, fine, let go of LBCC because it really wasn't where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And then I had known all of the people at OCC. Um, I had known enough about it and knew it was a good thing. Still know it's a, a really, it's a great thing. Um, and then I teach part time for five years, and then get an opportunity to apply for full time, and I I get full time, and I'm finishing up my or I'm in the middle of my seventh year of full time. Wow. So about five years ago, I see this handsome bald guy walking through <laughs> the art center building with an attractive young woman. And I'm like, oh. And he's like, Eric. And I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh my God, it's 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 Michael. And you know, like I hadn't seen you before that, I couldn't even tell you when the last time, you know. You're like, probably yelling at me on a set somewhere. No. That's probably the last time you saw me. No, you, you, I, I swear, you must have really, I must have been really cranky that fateful day. <laughs> anyway, um, I see Michael, and I, and you know, he introduces me, and it's his adult daughter, and I'm like, oh my God. And he's serendipitously touring his daughter the art center building. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect. He's had, you know, a very similar educational training than I had, you know, similar filmmaking interests. Mm-hmm. It, I knew he would be a great, you know, fit and had encouraged him to apply. So you can't say I'm your boss. You can't say <laughs> I got you the job because all I did was say, Michael, you should do this. <laughs> and thankfully you did. Well... <laughs> I got to clear up a few things because he, he kind of moves over things rather quickly. He doesn't, his memory isn't as good as it used I to be. I think it apparently. might not be. I mean, uh, yeah. aging does suck. I, re- I remember, you know, things pretty clear. I remember, so he's right. My daughter was um, considering com- community college and I said, well, you know, Orange Coast is kind of close to us. Why don't you, let's go take a look at that school. So she made an appointment with a counselor and she goes and has a conversation, you know, talks to the counselor, talk about the transfer things that they have available. And she says, well, why don't you guys go walk around campus? And I was like, okay. So we're walking around and I see this weird looking building and it says art center on it. And I'm like, what? I'm like, how do they get away? Well, it's arts center arts yes yeah plural so i guess that's how they get away with it i'm like oh all right let's go take a look at this and then we walk in and i'm like oh it's got white walls it's got all the black trim on it and i'm like wonder where they got this idea from because that's what art center looks like have you been up to that campus no i haven't been there it's like this black box up on the side of the hill above the rose bowl and it's just very industrial looking but it's very inspiring you walk in there and is it it still is it still around oh yeah yeah. art center oh yeah, yeah yeah As they open up another uh, campus, Southside campus. Three campuses now. I'm not sure right. about that. I know they have the they move the grad well, program. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So it to went downtown. From the one down to the bigger one. Correct, correct. So uh, it was just very reminiscent of the school that we went to, and I was like, oh, this is, and it obviously brought back a lot of memories for me. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. And I did have some work up, and we're walking around, and they have this little uh, gallery, and so we go look in the gallery, and and. I was like, ah, oh, not bad, you know, looking up. It's got three levels, and they got, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And so we're walking out, and this guy comes walking out of uh, a doorway, and I kind of, I, I look at him. You didn't, I don't think you knew that I worked there. I had no idea, but I looked, and I'm like, God, he looks familiar. That looks like, I'm like, Eric? <laughs> just to, you know, you ever see someone, and you call out their name just to see if they turn? Because I wasn't 100% sure. And he turns and he looks, he's like, hey, and I'm like, oh, shit. I go, what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing here? Going to the bathroom. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. he's like, I'm trying to, yeah. Trying to go to the bathroom. Trying to go to the bathroom. And how uh, how long? I think think even your daughter said something, you know, hey, Michael, you should should think about, you know. She didn't call me Michael. She called me dad. No, no, no. no, But like, I, (laughs) right. Your daughter said something like, I, you know, after we were like, Michael, you should try this and maybe, you know, think about, you know, being a part-time instructor. And she's like, yeah, he'd be really good at it. I remember your daughter already kind of calling it, 
Well, it's kind of funny. Be- well, okay, we'll get to that. But Eric says, you know, what are you doing here? And I'm like, yeah, we're just checking it out. And he's like, well, let me give you the nickel tour. And I'm like, tour of what? And he says, well, I'm the chair of the film department. <laughs> I'm like, what? I, I'm like, seriously? Because you know what I heard? They let anybody do it these days. <laughs> yeah. But because, but you know, it's like, you know, I remember Eric from school and, and, you know, we weren't close because he was just, you know, leaving whatever, but he probably would have been someone I would, I'm always attracted to the mean a-hole type of guys. <laughs> so, but, but he, yeah, he was Shots already fired. gone. But, but I, what I do recall from like, I know we were friends on Facebook and I remember you were the, like a programmer, program director of the OC, uh, of the, or, the, the Orange County, what it, Newport Beach Film Festival. Yes. And so I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, it, you know, when you get out of school, it's exciting to see people, you know, successful that are working in right. whatever capacity of the film business. Because I know some other people who are just like contractors or they just left the country because they're trying to get away from their student loans. <laughs> um, so I was like, OK, so he takes me around and he kind of shows me, you know, the TV stage. He shows me the equipment room. And I'll be honest, I was like, wow, really impressed, you know, for a community college. I mean, for any college, yeah. I was like, wow, because, you know, I've been to the other big universities and because we used to crew a lot for when we were in school for all the other like USC, UCLA, because we had really good polishing skills for shooting. And well, you would crew on this, like on student films or like, yeah. yeah. So like yeah. with their yeah. thesis projects, yeah, yeah. here's what they would do is they would contact Art Center DPs wow. and their crews because we had so much more experience than them because we shot commercials as opposed to, you know, a class selecting two students to do two projects right. a semester. So at Art Center, there were productions going on every semester, probably 10 to 15 different projects. Oh, my God. And somebody always knows somebody at, you know, yeah. AFI or, you know, help out at a UCLA thing. I mean, it was like a... A small network of people that were constantly making stuff but it was it was a little weird because it was a lot of commercials mm-hmm. and music videos know, that's really not what I wanted yeah. to do but you you go through opportunities as you get them and you know god I remember some of the stuff that they asked me to do is just crazy I the first time that I got invited to a you know a upper level project they said you know do you have a driver's license and I said yeah they're like cool well thanks for showing up we really need your help taking this five ton truck you know back to downtown LA with a bunch of of backdrops in it like you gotta like drive this big thing and I'm like okay because I I could drive a box truck but a five ton no you know, it's like the sparklets. Tr- it's big. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, like I've try to turn before. around and make a U turn. I mean, like I was stressed make, out of my mind. Try making a left turn with that. This was for a guy. I don't know if you remember or ever knew him. I think maybe you maybe have heard of him, but like he he went on to become a somewhat successful director. I think he made a he made that movie Grey Gardens with Drew Barrymore. Oh yeah. His name is Michael Susi. Anyway, Michael was like. Here's the keys. See ya. And I was like, okay, I, I guess I'll survive. See if I survive. And so I, I took the truck and was able to take back their stuff. But like that was really not anything I was prepared for. And you know, super sketchy to just expect. You know, I was 24 years old. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now too. As a PA, I'm well. I'm not driving five ton. I don't do that. I won't do that anymore. But like, I'll do a box. And truck I swear, I think it was. Feet, yeah. I think it was a manual transmission five ton. At the, if I, I think I mean I remember like, oh my god, this is crazy. Especially in downtown LA, or yeah. just, or just in LA with, oh my god. Try to get anywhere in a thing like that, and mm-hmm. so I made it, and I didn't, you know, damage anything, but like. I remember kind of just going, if this is what it is, I'd made a big mistake. I mean, this is. Yeah, it's crazy the kind of responsibility they'll throw on someone just brand new sometimes, you know. And you're like, oh, we got insurance. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, It's fine. They ask, I mean, obviously now they always ask, like, are you comfortable driving a five ton or are you comfortable driving a box truck? And then, like, I, I, you know, go in my head and I debate. I'm like, okay, can, can you send me a photo of it? Let me see what it looks like. And then I determine from what it looks like. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'll drive that. 
but like if it's a five ton for like with grip equipment no 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 i can't do that it's anymore. a it's a way to learn <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> you know, that, that's, you know, uh, I'm all about pushing people and <clears throat> getting out of comfort zones, mm -hmm. you know, because if I knew what I had to do for some of the jobs, I probably wouldn't have done them right. originally. Like, um, you don't realize you have a fear of heights until you have to, you know, get up like on a catwalk that's 100 feet up over a, a, a sound stage. Actually, it wasn't even a sound stage. Um, performing it, so the well it, it was over at downey studios um oh. that's where it's the old rockwell where they built like the the apollos okay that, okay. that go up and you know the one that went onto the moon so they have these huge towers that inside and uh, they opened up a movie studio and so i was on this job for a genesis commercial and we had to get the camera up so high because they take the Genesis apart. And so you got to see three. And so the only way to do it was you had to be at least 80 feet up. Oh my God. And there were no other stages available except for this studio because they had this huge place. Developing your fear of heights. <laughs> and I had to rig the camera. So we had to rig, you know, these big trussles out, you know, about... I don't know, I would say, well, I'm probably gonna exaggerate, but it felt like 20 feet, but I think it was more like 10 feet out. Strap it all down to this catwalk and we got you know these ratchets and we're just trying to make it sure tight. And Brian, who was the, uh, the photographer was like, all right, go ahead and rig it. <laughs> I'm like, do I got a safety chain? He's like, what do you need a safety chain for? I'm like, are you serious? He's like, and he, finds one and he's like, all right, here you go. And I go out there and I'm probably going like an inch at a time. I'm like scared to death. He's like, any day now, come well, that, on, let's that, go. That yeah. 10 foot looks like 20 real oh, fast. And, and, yeah. and, it, and it felt like it, but I was going so slow. He says, come back. So I come back and then he jumps up there just sh without a safety chain and shuffles. And I'm like, this guy's going to die. This guy's going to fall. I I'm literally having like panic attack Flashback. practically. Thinking, yeah. thinking that this guy was going to fall and I'm going to watch this guy die just because he wants to rig a camera in a certain spot. But, you know, and how we had to get up there yeah. was uh, a, a condor, a lift. Oh, scissor. scissor yeah, scissor. so we had, to take, we had to take this thing. No, it wasn't a, wasn't a scissor. Just the small, like, no, one it was person. The, no, it's the big one that has, like, the arms and stuff. I think, they call, I think it was called a condor. Mm -hmm. And just going up there and he thought it was the funniest thing you know i mean we're friends now but he would he'd be like shaking like the joystick a little bit and he's like i and didn't know you're afraid of heights the you should whole thing oh yeah when you yeah, yeah. and then and he's driving it while we're still i don't know about 20 feet off the ground because then we had a rig because we had to put up a bunch of seamless all around because we had a it's all reflective metal right so we had to you know cover Block, this whole cut, th yeah it, it was that was like my one of my first big jobs and I was scared to death, and I was thinking, yeah. I don't. I, I was thinking, if What's this is happen? what I have to, yeah. I said, the only other thing that's going to be worse if they make me jump out of a plane with the camera or go underwater with some great whites. That'd be fun. I don't mind that. Yeah. Great whites, I don't mind jumping. I did. I jumped out of an airplane. Oh, I did it last year. Oh yeah. How, yeah. how was your experience? It was amazing. Eric, are you going to jump out of an airplane? I think I'm good. <laughs> are you going to do it again? I would. Oh, I definitely want to do it again yeah. for sure. They, they have these, uh, the place I jumped at, they also have these twilight jumps. So as the sun sets, you can jump out. So Where, Where'd you go? Um, it's, I think it's called Jump USA down in Oceanside. Oh, okay. I went to Paris, California. So yeah, I think there. they own, they have one that's over there too. And that was the decision. And I said, look, if I'm going to jump out of a plane and die, <laughs> I want it to be beautiful scenery all the way down <laughs> as opposed to some armpit of California. No offense to anyone that's in Paris. But you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was still, I mean, it was still beautiful because you, you don't look around. You just look at, you know, the ground when you're falling out of an airplane. I wasn't really looking up oh. at the view. <laughs> See, that's just it. If you had this beautiful ocean, you'd be looking out at the ocean. But then when they, you know, pull the cord, then yeah. Yeah, then you see all that stuff. Field, and yeah. I was with this guy. was crazy because you go tandem with it. And yeah. as we're going up, he's like, so uh, is this your first time? I'm like, yeah, it's my first time. And he's like, so why are you doing it? What, what, why now? And I said, well, you know, um, so I'm going through a lot of changes in my life and, you know, I figure um, I want to face my fears and I don't, and I've always been, had this issue with flying. And he says, so you decided to jump out of a plane? 
I go, if I jump out of a plane and survive, I'm not going to have an issue getting on one. And he said, I like that. He says, I'll tell you what, we're going to do something special. I was like, okay. He says, we're going to flip out of the plane. <laughs> You're like, great. I was like, awesome. let's do it. I was all for it, man. I was so mentally prepared to do it, and that's what I did. Is we oh, you guys flipped? Oh, yeah, we, we flipped we, out. We he says, all right. He says, you see how those scared-ass people are getting out, and you see these people, they're like, they're, they, they, they sit you over on the side, right? And you sit down, and then you just kind of fall out of the plane. He says, you're going to get up there, and you're going to squat. Like you're, you're just going to squat. I'm right behind you. And he says, and when I hit you on the shoulder, he says, just jump forward. I'll get the momentum, and I'll jump us out. And we did like three flips. Oh, and then we free fall, and then he does this weird other stuff that makes a spin. Where well, I almost got sick, actually. But he was nuts. And then as we're coming down, he starts doing that crazy thing, too. And I'm like, Dude, oh, my God. But I survived. And it was amazing. I had a great time. Yeah, definitely. I want to do the high altitude. So the one where you, they give you oxygen. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we, what, what altitude? 15,000 feet. Oh, damn. I was at 12, 12,000 feet. But okay. the high altitude is 18,000 feet. Wow. And you have to have oxygen for that one. Yeah. Wow. Let's do it. Come on, Eric. <laughs> oh, you guys should go and do it and like vlog it. You know what I mean? Vlog the whole experience. Well, I, I did get the guy. It doesn't me at all. I, I did have someone uh, videotape me on the way out, too. So. I had somebody do that, too. So, yeah, yeah, so you get to see the Part whole thing. Part of the package. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little bit of an upgrade. I figured I want good evidence <laughs> if I went splat, right? You had to get the 4K. Four, exactly. <laughs> um, before you guys went... I mean, before you guys started teaching, what did you guys want to go? Like, what s field did you want to go into for, like, in the um, film industry? Uh, so with me, I always thought I wanted to be a director, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the opportunity to do it, and it was probably the worst experience I ever had. What? Yeah, it was just because, you know, the powers that be try to take advantage of you because they knew I was, bra as a matter of fact, the opportunity I had because of relationships, mm -hmm. I was actually in the grad program at our, I was still a student when this happened. Oh, wow. And the producers who are also the writers, they were basically trying to direct through committee. They were trying to direct through me. And I, I just had just a bad experience. I mean, one of these guys were, you know, he was my, him and I, everything's cool with us now, but at the time, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, I said, stuff's like going to this guy's head. Like, you know, he thinks he's this, you know, just because there's, you know, it's funny when people start getting some success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess some people handle it different ways. And he was very successful at the time and had a lot of uh, friends, you know, mm -hmm. and. I almost feel like before when he called me, um, I almost feel like they had a conversation saying, oh, let me bring on this guy. You know, he knows what to do, but then we can tell him what what we want, you know, so to speak. And that's just not how I was trained. Um, and, and a lot of it had to do with, you know, my own personality and kind of temperament at the time, because I'm like, who are these guys trying to tell me what to do? I said, if you want to do it, then why don't you direct? Mm -hmm. Just because they don't understand like the technical aspect of what directing is. Right. And so I'm like, you're not going to use me just to do that. And so we kind of had words on set. You and I always tried that to, conversation. Yeah, I, I had it many times. Um, but anyway, it, it just I, I also realized, you know, in talking to uh, some of my mentors, um, you know, what's sad is both of our mentors passed away. Um, my mentor was uh, Michael Gottlieb. Well, it's. Let's get other ones. Let's yeah. Get the, you know, we're supposed to, you know, learn mastery through many masters. Right. right? Yeah. But um, I, I had a conversation with him and uh, Michael Gottlieb direct, wrote and directed Mannequin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a commercial photographer and wrote this script that everybody wanted at the time. Uh, and he used to tell stories about uh, Katzenberg and how they would fight on the phone all the time. And. When this stuff was going on on set, I called him and I said, hey, do you have a second? He's like, what's going on? And he knew I was doing this this uh, job. Right. And I just, you know, was started venting, telling him what was happening. And he just kind of chuckled. And he says, you know, he goes, what do you think being a director is all about? 
He says, do you think it's just, you know, you being able to do your job? He says, most of what your job is, is trying to play that game and not lose your cool and uh, get what you want, um, but yet still make them happy. Right. You know, it, it's just this weird kind of thing. There, there's no class for that. <laughs> you know, this was something that they never prepared, you know, you for. And it was just real frustrating to think that people can behave so um, childish, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes. But at the end of the day, like I said, everything ended up okay. My buddy and I were still friends. I'm not friends really with the other two guys. But when it was all finished, um, and I don't want to say names because, you know. Sure, <laughs> right. But uh, one, of, one of them actually, he, uh, he approached me and he said, hey, he says, I want you to read a script. And I'm like, okay. So he gives me a script and, and uh, you know, he's calling me practically every day. So what do you think? What do you think? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I think this is great, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, how would you like to shoot it? And I'm thinking to myself and work with you again. Are you nuts? You know, I was like this close to killing you. And I just said, no, I'm busy going to be working on a documentary, um, you know, but I appreciate it. Right. But anyway, that's just the kind of thing that I realized. That's what I wanted to do, but not anymore. I, I actually really enjoy just wanting to be a, a writer. You know, that way I can work alone. Uh, I can work anywhere. And if they want to make changes or anything, they pay you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you have a lot of skill. with. You've lit several things with me. So I know you, well, as you a do enjoy... The yeah, te the technical. I do enjoy the technical. So I, I, I mean, from from our conversations we've had, I've, I know that you liked photography. So yeah, so, so that's um, always been there. That's always well. Is so photography more of a hobby then? No, no, that's actually probably where I've had um, more success with my career, mm -hmm. and that's because, and the reason why it shifted the photography is, so when I graduated, I graduated in two thousand six, literally weeks before the Writers Guild went on strike. Oh, I, remember. I remember that. And Hollywood just shut down. So mm -hmm. anything that I had going on at the time, it just, it was oh, over. Yeah. You know, even the thing that I directed, it's like everything was put on hold um, because of that. And you know what, that strike lasted over almost six months, 100, 100 some days. And you know, you figure the people that were already working in the business, uh, they were struggling. And so when when that tree got shook, the Hollywood tree got shook and all these people fell out, when it opened back up, uh, so many people were scrambling to get back in. And I'm this new guy and they're just like, no, no. <laughs> nothing's going to happen with right. you. And the only other skill set that I had really um, where I could get work because I would get offers all the time to shoot stuff was photography. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I kind of started to, to go into, you know, and then I worked as a cop and then I started doing all these other, you know, it's kind of funny. It's, uh, it seems like if you don't, you know, get out the gate and start working for a company right away, like work your way up. If you go into like grip and electric or whatever else it is that you're going to go into, depending on what you want, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of become this hustler in, in, in a way, you know, you're hustling for your next job. You know, and you're networking and you're um, making relationships. And then, you know, you'd be surprised when someone's looking for something and they give you a call. Yeah, that's that's where you want to drive a five ton truck. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, sure, I'll give it a shot. I you mean, know? You, you couldn't say no. You no, you can't. You, if you, well, you can't. You know what happens if you said no. They'll never call you again. You're yeah. out. Yeah. And that's I've like, actually said no. Sorry. No, I mean, I've said you know, no. of course yeah. you learn. Through you learn what to, to say no to, to how to say no, yeah. but you know, yeah, I remember being like, "Oh, I, I, I better just figure out how to do this." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's and you know, yeah, I, 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 risk I, my I, life though. Well, you don't want to do anything that's not safe, right? That's for sure. Safety, and that's one thing I always try to talk to the students about. Safety's number one, always. Yeah, I've been on a lot of sets where safety's not priority. Well. Unfortunately, because they substitute, um, it's, it's because a lack of money is right. typically oh, what oh, it all comes down that's to. Oh, we're tight on budget. Well, and we're and tight on development, budget. they never work out what they really should do, appro you know, appropriately. You know, as much as that I've been on set, I've in the real like, if you want to call it the real world, is that it's lack of pre-production and budget 
is the number is the two biggest thing that I've seen. It's like, oh, we don't have like, oh, we don't have the money for it. Oh, we mm-hmm. we don't have the time for it. Oh, we don't. I'm like, okay, well, that's why I. That's why when I talked to Eric, so when I started working at at um, OCC, you know, he was basically. He's, I'm like, well, you know, I've never taught, dude. I'm not a teacher, and he's like, ah, he's like, just bring your experience. You remember Art Center? He's don't treat them like they got treated <laughs> at Art Center, <laughs> but. Uh, he said, look, here's the curriculum. Mm-hmm. Make as many changes as you want. Here's the only thing that we're concerned about. And he showed me what this SLO was. He says, as long as the student learning, student learning outcome is X, Y, Z, teach the class however you want. You have a lot of act- academic freedom. Yeah. You know, and oh. as long as you cover the material, it doesn't matter how deep or in what order or whatnot. And I didn't want you to feel... I have to do something somebody else made, and in their, you know, I have to cook their recipe exactly. Like it's not. I was. Like that. I would have. Well, and I would have been totally fine with that because, um, you know, and, and I remember what you told me too. You said, "Look, it's going to take you a while to find your groove." Oh yeah. You know, it's like the first day, uh, my very first day of teaching. It's a four-hour class, mm-hmm. and you know, it's broken up, and you know what you're going to cover, but. I think my first class was over in 45 minutes <laughs> because I just went so fast through everything. Well, and then you're, you're, you're nervous. Yeah, you're nervous excited, and all that. You know, you know, you have so much to give. You want to keep it going. And then your students are probably, you know, overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, you know, and then my next class, it's like, then I didn't even get through half the stuff that I was right. supposed to. And that's when I was talking with Eric. And he's like, yeah, you'll find your groove. Don't worry about it. You're fine. I like, think sure? it took me, I mean, to feel like I had any confidence, it was like three years of part-time teaching because, I wow. mean, you really don't know. We, we come in from not that perspective. Right. I didn't train to be a teacher. Right. Yeah. I came from a family of them, but I resisted. I was like, I don't want to be, I, I want to be an artist. <laughs> and... You know, <laughs> jokes on me. <laughs> my my follow up question is is I mean I'm assuming, but is teaching stressful or absolutely oh, anything yeah. you do? I mean, mm. pretty much like every passionately job, passionately with enthusiasm, do, yeah, stressful. But I think you're gonna have some <laughs> well hard feelings and soft feelings about, but hard feelings. Yeah, especially if you you know, as a part time you know instructor. Um. I'll be honest, I don't do it for the money, you know? I could do other jobs. Um, And I still squeeze in my job sometimes, you know, my class, I'm like, hey, we're starting at, you know, that's why I teach mainly at nighttime Mm -hmm. because a lot of my jobs are during the day. During the day. But, you know, I I try to treat my students like, uh, like peers, you know, like professionals. And that's my expectation for them. And I'm just sharing my knowledge and, you know, like I tell my classes, like, you know, one of the reasons why I teach is, uh, first of all, it's inspiring to me mm-hmm. seeing everyone that's so bright eyed and bushy tailed coming in because they have their dreams haven't been crushed yet. Right. It's <laughs> it's still fairly new for them. But, you know, they have these big ideas. And, and I think that's great. because I remember when I had those and mm-hmm. then when I start working and then, you know, the Hollywood grind just starts pushing you towards the pavement and you're just like, man, it's just a job now. And I hated the fact that it was a job, like learning, you know, uh, it reinvigorated me as an artist being a teacher. And it's inspired me a lot for Mm -hmm. my own work to where, you know, when I'm on set now, it's like, I'm I'm smiling. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm just so excited to be there. And a lot of times I'm looking and I'm stealing photos because I want to share with my students. Right. Because I want to show them, hey, look, here's what's kind of going on. Here's what's happening. You see how I'm telling you how, you know, look how the crew is working together. Right. Look how there is delegation that's going on. Everybody understands their job. It's a very, you know, because it can get, as you know now, it gets very confusing. It gets very chaotic. It yeah. can get very chaotic on well, set. Definitely, 100%. And so when you understand that hierarchy and you understand that's why these positions are here and that's what we try to teach them to say, look, there is a protocol and there's a reason for it. It's not because, well, I guess with some people it's egos, but for a lot of times it's like, look, this is why we were all here for the director. You know, the director has a lot of stress that's going on with them right now. And that's why you have these different department heads 
to do their job. And that's why as a director, you have to let them do their job mm -hmm. and not do it all yourself because right. you can't. It's just impossible. This is a collaborative medium. That was, I, I think one of the biggest things in film production one that was a little frustrating was how come you guys aren't working together? What, what, what's going on? How come, wh why does it seem like it's so hard to get you guys to work to, and this is before COVID where they had to stay away from each other. People were just doing, you know, I'm seeing directors of their own projects acting in their own stuff. And so I say, well, okay, you did the assignment. I said, but what did you really learn? You didn't work with an actor. Mm -hmm. You didn't really do any blocking. You didn't do any real camera work because the camera had to stay static. I think it comes back to when, what Eric was telling me is like, you know, especially from a student perspective is like some of them were, you know, nervous trying to find, you know, people trying to get, you know, people into to doing their projects. I guess there's not that that push for them to go above and beyond. Well, that's what makes a director. The landscape <laughs> has changed. People stop being social yeah yes. i'm blaming COVID. social media yeah. i'm blaming social media seriously too. i mean i i see a, an impact every day and we don't think it's weird to say hi how you doing let's have a conversation but like if you try to talk to somebody that's 22 years old yeah hi can we have a conversation they're gonna Oh, it's they're special. not oh, yeah. participate. It's I mean, just it's different. It's different. Yeah. I mean, no, knowing my friends, like when I want to talk to them, like if I want to talk to them on the phone, that I call them and like, why are you calling me right now? Yeah, why don't you just text? Yeah, me? Yeah, I'm like, well, I'm, trying, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. You know what I mean? Well, so, like, you're very different. Than, I'm a than phone me. guy. Yeah. I mean, and I'm maybe maybe this too. is generational. I'm not sure, but like, I focus and have to deal with that daily. You know, you have to talk now. Mm -hmm. This is, and I even today I'm like, this is when you guys need to respond, yeah. right here. When it, yeah. I ask, you respond. So that's the stressful part of it's teaching communication. You know, and that's just what it just. You know, I think our job would be so much easier because there's so many times I'll get done with like part of a lecture. I'm like, okay, does anyone have any questions? None of them do. No one does. Yeah. And then I'll bring up something and say, okay, can someone again tell me who's in charge of all the electricians on set? So there, I think we tire them out with our enthusiasm. You think that's what it Sometimes. is? Sometimes, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know from the 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 group. I just think that it's that stress of like, oh, I think because in, in my head, when I was in your classes class, my head was like, okay, how am I going to do this project? How, who am I going to call? What am I going to do? You you're know what I mean? spread like, so thin. Yeah. Try, now, I, this is something that I have tried to explain to you know new cohort groups. Look. This is going to get so sweet. When you get right. singular focus on a project, mm -hmm. you don't have your English essay. You don't have your biology exam. You've got nothing but art. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I try to convince them, like, it's going to get so much better. They just, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's a number of factors. It's fear. It's, I think, social media. I, I think people, COVID, I think has yeah. definitely oh, had, yeah. had, had, had an effect. We all had a downgrade. You know? That was difficult when I was in your guys' class teaching. I mean, I came I came into your class literally, I think, a month before COVID happened. And yes. we are doing cinematography, and I was so excited. And this was me doing OCC and Cal State Long Beach at the same time. And I was like, oh, I'm finally going to get my hands-on experience, do my own work, work with other people, work. And then we're like, we're going to go online guys we can't do this anymore and i'm like not I because we didn't want to damn. no and it, it definitely didn't work for me mm -hmm. i couldn't i didn't feel right i mean it doesn't still doesn't feel right to go for me are online. you guys fully online are you guys online still or you guys are back in we're back uh, in no i mean my load is all in person yeah, but yeah. there are online classes Classic. but i mean it just doesn't make sense to me how you can do a film production class yeah, online. No. By yourself, online. Can't well, that's it. it's almost like uh, trying to teach someone how to swim without going in the water. So you can talk like this is backstroke. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You can but, talk all about it, but, but like it's not the same. It's not as going in the going in. So I don't know. I'm 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 so grateful to be back right now mm -hmm. because everybody wants to be there. Right. Everybody's excited. The having the halls bustle again, and mm -hmm. having you know the s studio and suites get you. I mean, it's it's wonderful. It's what it should be. 
So I'm really trying to savor that right now. You know, I mean, since you guys brought up the topic social media with all this, you know, everything's going online, streaming service and everything. How do you guys uh, partake in that? Are you guys like like? I I use Instagram very very minimally. (laughs) Like maybe a photo of. A are you quarter. gonna? Are you guys gonna? Do you guys have Twitter? Are you guys gonna get Twitter? No, never used it. I hate it. Um, you know, sorry. One one note. Of my favorite director of all times. Obviously, Eric knows who I'm talking about. But Mr. Warner Herzog. Oh. Uh, you know, he said he said that he hates Twitter, and he says that we don't write anymore. No, like actually write, like mm-hmm. with our hands. I think he's right. Ra- I think it's he's all like absolutely everything correct. is with our thumbs, and not with like physically writing. And I can vouch for that. I don't. Well, you don't know, j- just like um, well, just like reading, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a curse and a blessing. I think for you know anyone growing up in this age, I had to learn what was called. Like for example. We want to find out information right now. You pull out your phone, you just quickly do a, a Google, yeah. and you're going to get, I don't know how many millions of pages that you can look through. And you know, But typically, we look at the first few things, and we read it, and we're like, now I know what there is. To now I'm an it. expert. Now, yeah. now I'm, I'm such an expert. And then you put the phone away, and you're kind of done. When I had to find something when I was younger, I had to go to the library and we had to use a thing called the Dewey Decimal System. What is that? Remember, remember microfiche? Uh, and microfiche, yeah. Do so you have to explain that to me? So you don't know what the Dewey Decimal System Microfilm. is? Microfilm. I don't know. No, okay. So, so the Dewey Decimal System, there was this big like catalog box. Like You would pull it out and it would be alphabetical, right? Through what? A- A through Z. So you had to know the author's name. You would pull it out, find the author's name. Damn, I need to Google search this. And And then you'd find you would find the author. And then if they had many books, they would have different titles and a little index card. And then it would tell you where it was at in the library and you would go and find it and check it out. Mm -hmm. But then I had to get that book because there's only one piece of information I wanted. I would have to read through this book to find out what I wanted. But in the meantime, I'm learning all this other stuff because I'm reading through everything. And it's physical and it took effort. And so then while I'm there, it's not like I'm just going to go hop, you know, 10 minutes in, into the library and then I'm out. Then it's like, well, I'm here. There's this other book I was kind of interested in. Next thing you know, you're there for an hour or two hours mm-hmm. and you're reading and you're absorbing. And, and I think more. that stays with you mm-hmm. a lot more than just quickly looking at your phone and putting yeah. it away. Personally, that's what no, I no, think. No, I totally believe I, that. And I think we're really scratching at, you know, this is the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Uh, what's the difference? Tell I me. mean, you've got, I can Google and yeah. I can be an expert yeah. versus somebody that's read every book on a subject and studied it. There's going to be a difference in how that is perceived. And, and Absolutely. So, you know, you can have a whole lot of ways as you want it but i think we connected more on you know we like the research we like the we like a deeper understanding yeah i don't like just uh skin deep stuff i want to i want to you know dig deep i want an experience i want something substantial right i used to remember this is maybe you had something similar this is my own mental you know issue but Oh, I'm gonna be. I want to. I want to be really great at this. I'm gonna make a lot of money. I'm gonna be really great at this. I have that right now. <laughs> and I had to learn that I was a bit misguided. <laughs> Wait, so I still feel that way. Well, <laughs> I'm looking. I'm, I'm feeling looking, that way right now. I'm looking differently now. All right. And for me, I'm way more. I'm looking for satisfaction when it comes to creative. I'm not oh, looking for. Well. I'm not looking for just the jobs anymore because that's not going to do anything for me. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm looking for a substantial experience. In I'm going to I'm going to meet like possible. I mean I'm trying to do the next job, next job, but then I'm trying to not focus on the money when I'm, you know, doing the job and then I'm trying to focus on my own stuff at the same time. So it's like I got to sit down and like reevaluate myself and reevaluate my life and see which way I want to go because you know, I, I want to be a director. But then as I keep going and keep doing this industry, I kind of realized that like I like doing first AD and second AD. So it's like maybe now I'm not going towards being a director, but like, you know, I'm just I'm changing my my perspective. Well, you're not getting into this to not tell your story, I hope. I mean, you're going to tell you're going to get your chance to tell your story someday. I hope. And you're doing all of this to gain your ability to do that. Right. 
So it makes a ton of sense why you'd want an AD. But I mean, don't forget, you didn't sign up to be just an AD. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people, we forget what we really want. I mean, I... I mean, I, I'm doing, I'm doing first AD, second AD. I'm doing sound now. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, in, I invested, you know, into sound, and I'm doing a lot of. Sa- I've been, yeah, doing sound for like all Chapman sets and other sets. So, and so it's one a thing means leads to an end. One thing leads to another, th- leads to another, leads to another. So, I mean, it's a yeah, and I, I think, um, kind of where where Eric is talking about too, and I understand what Eric is saying because we're older than you, and we both have kids, and so I think we have a different perspective like I I think for sure um, I would be very different and if I didn't have a a kid um, because I care more about the future and how people perceive how my daughter perceives me more than anything and so that's that's right and and wanting to make sure that whatever it is that I do and work for, that it does have substance and meaning. Like, how do I leave this world a better place than what it was when I came into it myself? Like, your your mindset just kind of changes. changes yeah. Um, but I, I do recall, I remember the drive, and I remember, you know, of saying, okay, I this is what I want to do, here's my goal. And then you kind of get beat up, and you're like, shit, it's not as easy as I thought. Oh, man, it's like, oh, but th- do I really want it? And it's kind of like you just want to play in the band, right? You mm-hmm. just want to play in the band and you want to be the saxophone player, right? <laughs> Up there in the front on the jazz band. But right now you got to play the tuba. But you know what? At the end of the day, you're still in the band. So whether you're doing sound or first or second AD, first AC, second AC, film loader. Well, they don't even have those really anymore. <laughs> Wait, but, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Really? Oh, fil- oh, yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. Now I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, now, well, someone has to load those mags. <laughs> well, at Cal State Long Beach, they, they still have that. That's great. And yeah. you should know that. You know, and here's here's the other thing. Um, uh, one of the things I always try to talk to the students about, and, and I think, I don't know if you do, I, I'm guessing you deal with this too in the independent stuff that you're working on, just based on what you're telling me about pre-production. Mm-hmm is they go too fast when you're shooting. Absolutely. They don't slow down because when we were at school, um, well, for the most part, we weren't even allowed to shoot anything ourselves until fourth fourth term. You had to be there for a year first, taking all your foundation classes. And you didn't really, you you didn't have an opportunity to shoot your own, you're helping other people do theirs because they're upper term, but for yourself, They keep you so busy on all the fundamental basics. That's number one. Number two, it costs so much money because we shot on film. And so every time you said action in the director's head, you saw dollar signs like going. Or you're thinking about, oh my God, there goes $300. Yeah, Yeah. right? $400. And then you got to process it. And then you got to go to telecent. All this costs money. And you're like, take 12? What? What? (laughs) Yeah. So <laughs> when you set up your shot, you were so concerned. You wanted to make sure that the lights are just right, the composition was right there, yeah. the actors were well rehearsed, everyone knew what they were doing, and then you would say action, and then inevitably something would go wrong, and you'd be like, oh, cut, 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 <laughs> because that's money. And you just wasted part of that role. Right? right? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you say that's a difference? Because now it's like I got my, my, my smartphone here, and I've taken... 30... I, we have I don't the, know how, how many... We have the opposite problem. Yeah, now it's just... I had a conversation today about overshooting. Shoot, overshooting, yeah. Well, and that's the other problem. It's so easy. Yeah. You want to. Mm-hmm. It's hard to stop. Yeah. Everything is good. It's all good. But then you come back and you don't want to process any of it. You don't want to <laughs> deal with looking at it, much of it. And I remember we agonized... I've got one roll of film. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How many shots can yeah. I actually get that could be usable? Yeah. Down to the second. Yeah, because right. we would have a stopwatch, you know, when it's running. Mm-hmm. And and you that was the difference. Right. You either you either got the pieces or you didn't get the pieces. Mm-hmm. The pieces, let's not talk about the quality of the pieces yet. Let's talk about just getting the pieces. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a different, it was the flipped mindset. Mm-hmm. And it served me well. I mean, I have always loved that I learned film and learned how to cut film with my hands. Mm-hmm. I was very proud. I get to say this. This will date me. I was the last class, I believe, at OCC that had flatbed editing. So after that, 
they in fully embraced, you know, avid yeah. media composer and, you know, what all Sign, of the other yeah. subsequent programs. Yeah. So then, I, you know, we, I took so a little true. time off, went up to Art Center. Art Center still had flatbeds. I remember we were all given gun smoke. Oh, yeah. To cut. Wait, I was, okay, you're talking about OCC was the last. I thought you said. No, at oh, OCC, I was the last. Okay, I was gotcha. Because I'm like, I, had cut, I had a cut on a flatbed when yeah, I was at, totally. at Art Center. Yeah. I thought yeah. you were talking to OCC. Well, I mean, or, or I thought you were talking about Art Center. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. And yeah. then. We were while I was there, they got rid of their flatbeds at Art Center. Uh, or, or they still no, had like one. They, maybe? they still had one because I remember shooting. We shot because we shot some film and had to edit on a flatbed. Yeah. And then it was, it wasn't wasn't it was Final Cut Pro. It was Final Cut Pro. It was yeah. Final Cut Pro. That mm-hmm. was the next thing. Yeah. So because because Avid at the time it's that's when Final Cut first came out and. We were into it. It was yeah. it was a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like now where we you know Walter Murch was cutting on it. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. He's well, still, he's still, he's still uh, there's a story. You. There's an OCC story about that. Bob uh, Lazarus actually got a hold of Walter through I think the editors guild, mm-hmm. and you know asked, "So Walter, what do you you know what are you cutting on?" And he's like, "No, I'll, I'll premiere." Oh really? So Walter had to change too. He was, in, uh, I think, a pretty big avid guy, and then liked to likes what he he switched to Premiere, and that was ten years ago. No, what year is this? Twenty twenty two. So yeah, maybe about ten years ago. Hmm. And then he used that information and look, hey everybody, Walter Merch says we got to go Premiere, and you know, yeah. I think at, at that time the district too was like, let's go Creative Cloud. It's a, deal yeah whatever. i still like to blow people's mind that transformers was edited on final cut i had always heard of and every major tell... movies being cut with iMovie yeah. and and you know other things that you know, sony vegas I, and I, other programs i think it comes down to what michael always tells us right 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 and story is the most important thing not doesn't matter what tool you use that's all it is is a and tool man i think if you can write Writing's the ticket. Yeah. If you can come up with the concept, if you can come up with something cool, you there will always be a need for you. Mm-hmm. But camera people, <laughs> sorry, lighting people. I mean, I think there'll always be some technicians, but you know, yeah. largely the automation, the Autobots I mean, are coming. Pr- pretty soon, it's you know, you you look at what these cameras can do now. I mean, they're kind of idiot proof, you know. Um, Especially programming just wait lights. Till iPhone know? 15. Right? No, <laughs> sir, sir, I mean, wh- when you think about it. Do you have the iPhone 14? I. Uh, yeah, right here. <laughs> I think mine's 13, but still, it's it does a great video image. But, it does. You know, I'm not going to live on it. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, the things that you can do now. I mean, we're crossing over technology. The way technology is working. I mean, we're using game design engines. Yeah. You know, and you can relight things. You can you can fix so many things. And pu- I mean, granted, if you have the money. Yeah. But you know, essentially, um, you know, um, one of my friends, you know, the industry before for car photography, it's gone because the the software programs that they have now are so good and lifelike mm-hmm. that they don't need a photographer to shoot an actual car. They just do renderings now. Yeah. And it's passable. And we're not far off from humans either with, you know, like it's, Unreal and right? Unity so, Engine. I mean, everyone, actors, you name it, as far as any of the craftsmen, craftspeople in the film industry, their days are numbered. <laughs> Except for the writer. The creators. Yeah. That's it. Writers, creators directors. Out there. Yeah. yeah, that's it. The, the only people. So that's why I always hit so hard in film production, too. That's why I'm like so much about story Mm -hmm. especially in that class and i'm like look for those of you that want for those of you looking to be dps editors etc that's great you know but get out you better have a (laughs) side have a side hustle ready for for you to go but those of you that want to be directors um or writers learn how to write Mm -hmm. understand story and come up with some great concepts because that is the only that's the ip that's your golden ticket Mm -hmm. to get into the business that is your that is your ticket as a director, yeah. you know. Essentially, I mean, it even worked for. Uh, look, 
ha- having the writing skills, that's what actually catapulted John Favreau's career. Mm-hmm. You know, he wrote Swingers. Oh my God, John Favreau's like right? freaking amazing. Take a look at Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Chef writing. Oh my God. Right, Chef was amazing. That's his, yeah. one of his best Mandalorian pieces, I think. And I mean, you know, Elf. <laughs> stuff isn't easy. Yeah. I luckily, I don't know how, I luckily had enough smarts to know I didn't want to be a director. Mm. (laughs) I've ended up trying it a few small times, like small potatoes, but it never made sense to me. I mean, for me, it it was homework for life. (laughs) It was a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I wanted to be able to like, you know, I had loved tools. I had loved technique. I loved the technical stuff. I wanted to be able to go home and have, you know, a dinner and go to sleep and not right. have to, like, go rewrite or go, yeah. what are we doing, you know, in four days. It, so, <laughs> luckily, I just, you know, here I get accepted to a program of, I think, about 100 people where mm-hmm. I know 90 of them want to be directors. So, I think, all right, yeah, my odds are going good. But then most of them, you kind of come to learn through observing and seeing their ethic and seeing their work. Okay. You don't have this is I could do what you're doing. Right. This isn't, you know, yeah. It's not rocket inspiring science. me. So, um and you know, where where we went to school is historically an advertising based program, so everybody wanted you to make commercials. Right. Which make I did that all wrong by the way. I should have I should have done way more commercial work when oh, I could have. But yeah, I'm trying to find more commercial it, work right it, now. It, it 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 I was the guy I was the guy that, you know, I'm gonna make a feature. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go be involved with a feature. I'm he's not all, gonna make any silly commercials. He keeps, yeah, every time in people. class when he's teaming up, he's like, "All right, who?" He looked to see who the David Lean fans were. You know, <laughs> that's yeah. those are the directors he would gravitate towards. Who actually towards. wants to be a filmmaker, yeah. not a commercial director? Oh, I, I see, and that's the funny thing. I went in there wanting to do narrative, long form narrative, mm-hmm. and when I was exposed to. Uh, the commercials world because right. I never really thought about it before and I just gravitated towards it. I love the commercials. I, I saw the stories within there and I'm like, if you can get an emotional response from an audience on a 30 second commercial, wow. holy crap, that's I didn't amazing. Get it. I didn't get it. I got it wrong. I didn't get it. Because you're I, a DP. Well, and I thought, <laughs> this is not the kind of filmmaker I want. Mm-hmm. No. And and I was naive. I should have I should have embraced it more. I could have made a much better launch into stuff. But but then again, I can't say I regret any of it because I I, I had met a couple of like minded people that took me on a ride, and you know, yeah. I made a feature during college. Right. And it, it's actually a really you know sweet movie. We mini DV tape, but you know we made a movie. And then that allowed me to make another movie with them later on. But, you know, I kind of misused my time there, I felt. At Art Center? Yeah. I should have worked the program a whole different way. Well, I should have worked with more directors. Mm-hmm. And I should have come out with several more commercial, you know, connections. Well, you know, and... I feel like um, when you when you go back in time, you just, like, say, I wish I did, I wish I did. Well, maybe it things. helps somebody else yeah. now. Well, maybe it helps you. I don't know. That Well, and that's why, you know, this is great while you have another Art Center alum. We used to have three Art Center alums teaching at OCC. Now there's just two of us, which is fine. But I like to use that as a training ground to, to tell the students now. And I said, <laughs> look, one of my big regrets at Art Center was things went too fast okay you know and i stayed there for undergrad and masters and i fe- and it was just i went through accelerated through the program but i was married had a kid i was working part time i like i never saw my family it was hence probably why i got divorced but needless to tough, say a tough tough time in your yeah, life yeah it was a tough time in my life yeah. and i spent i didn't spend the right kind of time uh I spent too much time alone. And what I mean by that is too much time in the dark room, okay. too much time uh, working, you know, allegedly on my, my own stuff that I never actually shot anyway. Never and enough network. Never enough see, network. See, and that's just, and, and it's, it's prime and ready. We, I mean, we did work together. We had to, mm-hmm. but 
it, it, like no one ever sat sat me down and said, "All right, listen, this is this is your time to actually not only have fun and enjoy what you're doing. This is the time for you to take risks. This is the time for you to make mistakes. This is a time for you to be a little bit reflective. Why are you trying to get out of here so quickly? You're going because we have three semesters a year. Um, you don't have to go. You, you only have to do. You, you can take one semester off a, a year if you wanted. Um, but I went all the way through. Mm -hmm. So you can get your undergrad in three years, three years, eight, eight terms, eight terms. Uh, and then my master's, I got done in three. So I just flew through that program. That was their yeah. whole gimmick. We're cramming yeah. four years into three for yeah. a bachelor's program. And yeah. then, you know, I think the same three years into two for a master's program. And I had, I guess I had an, maybe an, a little bit of a false expectation when you get into one of these schools, more is going to just happen. Yeah, not true. More is going to just, oh, oh. And then they would say shit like, Michael Bay went here. Zach Steiner went here. Oh, went oh, there. Tar yeah. Sam. Duh, haven't you seen R.E.M.'s mu music video? Oh, my God. <laughs> and you're like, great. How do I get, how do how I get, get to in? know them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Who do you have for me to meet? We don't know. Well, Zack Snyder actually goes back and teaches every once in a while. One, uh, sure. I mean, they're not all, yeah. you know, And Michael Bay, he, no, he's, no, he's, he's been he, a great he, supporter. Yeah, he, he I goes, can't. Yeah, but all of the people that went to Art Center, they, yeah. they come back and they give back to the students, right. you know. But at the end of the day, you know, Michael Bay or Zack Snyder or Tarsim or Steven Spielberg isn't going to make your career just yeah. because you're a fellow alum. And that's why. I kind of thought just by going there, we'd meet more people kind of automatically but that's not no that that's never how it is i don't i don't know that like i wanted to go to chapman and i didn't obviously i didn't get accepted but like i n know for a fact that if i went there i mean the people there just just even working with, I'm, i mean i'm working with them right now and just see how much energy and enthusiasm and they work together as a team is amazing but when i went to cal State long beach none of that i'll tell you i i have a i a theory on that but i also never made a film at that school so mm. were you in the film studies program I w they gave me the theory program so that's not production not production well that makes well, that, some sense yeah. then but i also think that um well it is for me at least uh, when you pay for something or something is that expensive you tend to want to do it uh you want to get your money's worth yeah so when you look at Chapman, that's a private school, and the money that's they, – they probably had to beg, borrow, and steal, you know, to be able to go there, whether it was begging their parents to allow them or signing away their life with student loans. <laughs> they know the cost and what, it, what it's going to be to go there. And so that is enough initiative to say, all right, what am I going to do? As opposed to – and this is the only big difference between, I think, a university or a four-year college and a community college. Community college is rather inexpensive. It's actually pretty cheap. I mean, when you think what it costs to go there, that's a night out. Yeah. Drink, you know. But I mean, I, I've had I had one of my best experiences at OCC oh. rather than at Cal State Long Beach. And you heard my spiel, what I tell students. Yeah. You know. Why I, is it better? OCC. Yeah. Better well, instructors. Better than no. That's that's a fact. Better instructors. That's number one. Uh, material is better. We get to do our own stuff. We get to collaborate. I mean, at least the department and the people that I, I was mean, with, I, we, I got to work with a lot of people and a lot of interesting and I and hear fun it people. a lot. I mean, and the I'm, environment. I'm, I'm happy to hear it. I like, mean, just the environment there. It's just everybody's out. Like from my take, everybody was outgoing. Everybody was eager to work. Um, and I networked, which got, gave me like other jobs outside of OCC, you know what I mean, with OCC students. And I mean, look at, um, I mean, look at Nick. Remember, I mean, I met Nick at OCC, Nick, uh, Nick Mendoza. Yeah. And then we do a lot of things together, you know? So it's like, I think it's fascinating to me. And I, 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 I don't know. I've loved being at the community college level because it's just, those those bad stresses aren't yeah. aren't connected to it. Like I remember feeling a lot of stress and anxiety. And you're right about the price tag. I got to I've got to perform. I've got to come out of here the best. I've got to come yeah. out of here. I, oh, at Art Center they used to say, oh well, you've got to get signed, signed. if you're going to be if you're going to be anything. You got to get representation well, while you're a student. Don't you for like act 
No, no like for, to you know. No, you got to be you're, rep. You're yeah. getting part taken of the DGA by, at a, as a no, no, that's union. Director's, like no. an agency. Agency. Uh, pushes you out there and gets you more work because you're so creative and so talented. But, like, nobody knows these 25-year-olds yet. Right. And right. I was always, I was mortified. I mean, you'd have people that were 19 years old straight out of high school come to Art Center and, like, <laughs> lose their mind a bit because yeah. Yeah. it was a lot to take on. And, you know, I, I was a little bit older. I had gone to community college. I had spent six years, I think, going to two community colleges and finished an OCC. So I had a little bit of like I don't want to waste my time. You are definitely that way because oh, yeah. you 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 had no. I mean, I most of the students there were not raising a family or having a kid. I mean, not the, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's intense. Were you, but, were you guys married when you went to the art institute? Or you, like, no, I wasn't. I was. Oh wow. Yeah, I was married and had a three year old daughter. I was older. I was twenty six. 27 when I went to art center when I when I finally went when I finally figured out what I wanted to do so I was a little I was older a little bit right. than most of the students and I came from uh, well I made a transition I was an actor I was a union actor and I discovered that I actually enjoyed being behind the camera more than in front of the camera so for me my experience was a little bit different going in there and so a lot of students thought that like I was this experienced, you know, guy, um, just because I had working knowledge of what it was like being on a set, but I didn't know how to use any of that equipment, right. you know? And so it was, it was a learning curve for me, but you know, for me, like I said, knowing I was paying, f well, I think it was for me, $12,000 a semester. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's what tuition was, and then you know, all that your sounds other, easy now. Oh, I know. I think they're pushing twenty thousand now, <laughs> but you know, I wanted to get as much as I could. I remember even um, one of the instructors. Gosh, what was his name? I can't remember his name, but he taught color theory too, and he was closing up the color lab, which is gone now, by the way. Um. He, he saw me in the, you know, I was still printing, and he says, what are you doing here still? And I'm like, well, I said, you know, I had, I have like an extra hour before I have to, you know, head off to work, so I just kind of, and he's like, why do you work, he, and he was funny, he, he wasn't being a jerk, but he's like, why are you working so hard? Mm -hmm. And I said, because I'm paying for school myself. <laughs> right. I want to get my money's worth. Right. And then he brought it up in class, actually, the next week in class, he was like, you know, and I hate it when, when, people do that point out when they try to use you as an example even if it's for good you just go oh god now you're you know everyone's going to hate me because they're they're not working as hard you're but that's the a, you're a great example yeah well that's what he was saying he was saying look this guy he doesn't even have to be here he's printing even more than what he needs to do i'm closing up the lab and have to wait for him i could have closed early but i gotta wait for him and you know what i would stay an extra hour later if michael wanted to stay he's and he would say w what are you guys doing here what are you guys doing here? If you can't wait to get out of class, then why did you choose to go to Art Center? Right. And they tell us on our first semester. Do you remember when, I don't know if they did this with, with you, but when we first went there, they had this family and friends uh, orientation. Do you remember that? Well, I don't, I mean, there was definitely an orientation, but I didn't. So they, like they, in, they encourage you to invite your significant others and your family, and then some upper term students talk to them, and they said, hey, you know, this is a very different kind of program. Take a look. You're not going to see them anymore. They're going to be too busy at work, too busy at school. Do you you don't remember that? They didn't do that to me. Oh, they did that to us. And I was like, "Okay, bye." All right, you know. Cuz you still didn't you're like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." Until you start. And they just throw the workload on you. I think it was I think it was our our chair Bob Peterson that said something to the effect of like, "Yeah, you're going to come through this program." And you're only going to get what sticks. You're not going to get everything. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> what am I what? paying all this money what? for? <laughs> yeah, what? I'm not going to get it all? What? And he's like, no, well, you're going you're gonna to specialize and go into this. And, 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 and you know, he was a really interesting dude. Um, I, it, Commercial director. Anyway, it just it flipped my noodle for a while on the whole concept of higher education. I was very bitter. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget the week of graduating all the students have to go meet with some kind of like counselor career office person at Art right. Center and they're like, Oh my gosh, congratulations, you're on the honor roll. That you're great. 
I can't, I have no help for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I kind of remember going, okay, cool, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Got the hell out of there and was like, that's what my money's worth. Well, you know, I'll, I'll say it here. That's my and, borrowed money's worth. And if Eric doesn't like what I say, you have to edit it out. <laughs> but, you know, my belief is this. Going to a community college, something like OCC, and I'm not just saying that because I, I teach there, but honestly, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Sp- spending 45 bucks a unit, is that what it is? 40, yeah, 40, okay. 46. For, $46 a unit and getting the type of education that you get from there because – we have the facility, the instructors, to get you prepped and ready to go within two years mm-hmm. of everything that you really need to know in the business. Like if you say you want to transfer to a four year after you go to OCC, my question is this, what else do you expect to learn? Yeah. Honestly, what, what more do you need to learn? You want to learn more about lighting? You want to learn more about editing? You want to learn more about sound? Start working. Go do it. Just go do it at this point, because now all you need are the basic knowledge, yeah. knowledge, the tools, the working tools, and save your money. If you really want, if you got a, you're burning a hole in your pocket to get rid of, you know, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. Come talk to me. All right. <laughs> Legitimately, shoot a film if you think you're ready. If not, then just start working. Do but exactly it, what it, you have going it, on. There's that stigma of that you need that piece of paper. Really? Because I'll tell you what, not once, not one time since I've ever been hired professionally have they, they ever asked, asked they what ever school, asked, what school do you go to? Well, you, ha- you talk about that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but they don't ever go, did you graduate? <laughs> Let me see your piece of paper. As a matter yeah. of fact, I was working, uh, okay, so one of my first jobs, I was a copywriter. And this guy took a, a, a risk on me because he knew I was a film guy and I, were, and I did stuff like advertising, um, theory-based through school, but he knew I went to Art Center. His wife went to Art Center in the photography department and he had a graphic designer who was an Art Center grad as well. And so he was like, oh, well, let me get this copywriter. We got this whole Art Center kind of thing going on. I'm like, sounds great to me. I think it was my second or third day it ended up being a Friday and we went out, he takes us out to lunch and I meet the guy, uh, the graphic designer and we're sitting next to each other. And so I'm like, Oh, so did you have, you know, did, mm-hmm. what'd you think of Ron Romero? Yeah. He's like, Oh, I never had Ron Romero. I'm like, Oh, when did you graduate? And he was like, dude, I never graduated. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. And I'm like, Oh really? And then I talked to some other people like, um, Roger Avery, the guy who actually wrote, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Pulp Fiction. He never graduated from Art Center. I mean, he went there, but he never graduated. He never got his piece of paper. But you talk to, I, I think your alum, who he got an honorary uh, graduation, he never graduated. Steven Spielberg never graduated yeah, uh-huh. from Cal State Long Beach. But then so, he, went, he went back. And then... hey, oh, come on. No, he went back for an honorary degree. They didn't yeah. make him take any classes. Right. I mean, what is a film teacher going to teach Steven Spielberg? I got to be, I was at his graduation. Oh, really? Ceremony. Because were you teaching there at the time? No, 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 no. Oh. Cal State, I never, no. That's a, yeah. that's a much different uh, level. For, <laughs> were you for, like in the, in the front or in the back? No, or? I was far away because I had a friend who was graduating in the same class. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I saw him from, you know, a mile away. He was really little, but you know, <laughs> I was there. But point being. I agree. I, who, I, I, has I, it ever, I has anyone ever has he it, sat in class, but I don't think oh, it was probably for very long. But have you ever had <laughs> anyone in your professional work ask you if you graduated or wanted to see your piece of paper? Uh, no, no. I'm getting, telling you, no. Nobody's ever getting asked hired at, uh, to be a teacher was the only time, and they didn't want to see the paper. They just wanted to see that it it said I had a degree. <laughs> oh, oh man, they made me go through. I mean, I think somebody in HR verifies this. They yeah, will actually yeah. go verify your degree is not made up. Right? Yeah, but, but but as far as film production goes, no. I mean, it's no. always like, who do you know? Let me see your stuff. Let me see your stuff. Let me yeah. see your portfolio. What have you worked on? And then people want to know. And then the other thing is like, okay, can you do what we want you to do? Right. Okay. And then the other thing, the other big thing that they're concerned about, is this someone I want to work with? Yeah. You know, is I think someone? that's even number one. Oh, that's that's well, I think that's no. Taken number one. Well, I don't know if that's number one because oh, I like this guy, but he's know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, maybe you they'll hire you as a PA to well, yeah. get, yeah, get coffee, course. but I mean, I'm talking if you're going to be part of a crew or you're going to DP something, you're going to sure. edit something. 
okay, can you do the job? That's mm-hmm. your degree, so to speak. Do you have the experience? Are you, are you someone I, I want to work with? And then the other thing is, can you actually deliver on time? Mm-hmm. Like that work ethic, I think, is so vital, so important. And people get that, not from you. They get it from, because they'll talk. It's a small network, yeah. you know? They'll be like, hey, so what was it like working with Eric? Oh, dude, that guy, he shows up with his gloves on. <laughs> awesome. We're, he's on. He's mean. <laughs> I don't care about that. Bring him on. Well, I then I, I kind of want to follow back to a question. There's a stigma. I mean, I, technically, you kind of already said it about, you know, over OCC, community college, you don't need to go to four-year. But, I mean, there's a stigma of, like, people saying, like, why should I go and learn from a professor? I mean, no offense. I mean, I like you guys. Okay. I'll sure. Bit, yeah. But um, why should I learn from a professor who've never actually, ma- you know, made it in the world? Why am I going into the classroom and learning from this person? I mean, there's a big stigma. I'm like a that lot now. more fun than a, a LinkedIn learning <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you no, know, I mean, I think better than YouTube. different learning styles. And I mean, I, I am one of the people that thrives in a group with a collaborative spirit in a classroom setting. Mm-hmm. Not everybody wants that. Not everybody wants it that way. I think, again, the landscape is totally evolving and changing, and people yeah. want it different, and they want to get it off their phone or their tap. Fine. But you to really get it and to really kind of expand your ability to network and, and really try to get with people that are better than you. Yeah. I don't think that was a question he was – I don't think that was a thing that he was talking about, though. Oh. I, what, what what I, think, about? What, I think what he was saying was – Did I not we, phrase it correctly? Did I not say it correctly? I don't know. Try it. Try it again. Like I'm ba- like, there's a stigma of like, why should I go and learn from a professor who hasn't who's instead not, of learning on your own? Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I know what he's saying. He just doesn't want to say because it's because he Can thinks you it's help insulting. Me? I don't know what, what he's saying. What, what is he saying? It's it's exactly what, what? I told Eric when That's he exactly asked. That's exactly what me. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he said, uh, <laughs> Eric. When when Eric said, "Hey, I think you'd be really good teaching a class here." When I first when I met him on that day at OCC okay. and I and I said something that I regret saying yeah. and I said it to him because I know him, but I wasn't like good friends, but it was kind of like a, a, a jab. I said, well, you know what they say, Eric, those who can do those who can't teach. <laughs> do you remember? And he just kind of grinned. He says, tell you what he says, let me buy you lunch. Come here on Friday. I want you to sit in on this class. And I said, okay. And I sat in on the class and I was watching, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, first of all, we're both working. Prof- well, he's now full time, but I'm still a working professional. Mm-hmm. I still work on sets. So I may not be a household name. I may not be Steven Spielberg or Tarantino, oh. but there's only a handful of those guys that you know. Yeah. You know, even you um, as a... Uh, filmmaker now working independently and having gone to OCC and Cal State Long Beach can you name 15 directors no oh okay my God. name name three TV directors for me name two commercial directors for me I was gonna name an editor Hank Corwin isn't he an editor oh yeah, yeah. Hank, yeah. Hank yeah he yeah, was he's an editor we we did that uh, the panel yeah the panel yeah, thing he right was, he was really interesting. He was, he was I really mean fifteen interesting. directors I mean that probably like sure uh, but my my point being is there are so many professionals that are out there working that you just right. don't know who they are right just like actors right you know the big stars but you don't know all the other people mm-hmm. um, so if people and, and then here's the thing if people think that they're gonna learn something from Tarantino or from Ridley Scott no well. Listen, those those guys are great directors. That doesn't mean that they can actually teach you something. Unless you're just going to shadow them, but that's going to be one person at a time. That's when they become a mentor. They're not teaching a class at that point. Yeah. But just because you're a great X Y, you know, uh, director, writer, whatever it is, you also have to find the ability. And I think this is what gravitates people who are working professionals to teach at a community college is because it's giving back. Like Eric said, it's, there's something, you know, in us that says, you know what, I, I want to see improvement in this industry. And the only way that, you know, we talk about all the time, we complain all the time about what, oh, there's shitty movies out there. There's no good movies. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, what are you doing about it? Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm doing about it is I'm teaching students to be better. 
That's we're trying. True. We yeah, we do we do have true. we we do change the culture. Absolutely, we we do. It's I, I it's going to take 10, 15 years, but at least when I am retired, I'll have some good stuff to look at. You I know? didn't always think about it that way, but I mean, it it is really what it is. We're we're trying to will our ideas of a better process or yeah. or storytelling set of experiences we want to make it better i think that's why it's still fun to show up to work every day and get to work with people that hopefully have given their ideas yeah. a little bit of a damn mm-hmm. just a little bit is it more work is yeah. that what you're actually asking yeah no yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. see that's why i he... do well look it depends on certain employers you know value education and academics but creatives, they're in a different wave. They they want to see skills. They want to see personality. Right. Yeah. So I do think that's what you get a little bit through transmitted when you're getting a program. Yeah. We're mm-hmm. working on you know your mindset and attitude also, trying to get you you know out of your uh, comfort zone. How to work on that. How to well yeah. how to communicate. How to be you know leapfrog to different gigs it's because it's you it's yeah. your you know you're becoming non-disposable so you know yeah i, I think I, I feel like we we sometimes have to parent and i don't <laughs> like that but Interesting. well sometimes it does feel that what way. do you mean like you, you we're literally parents. telling people how to manage their time and trying to get them to think about reaching towards more professional behavior well, do you do that, the that's... same thing michael oh that you had my class. Well, you didn't. <laughs> not, not that my class was very different online, but you experienced me once in in person. Yeah. You know. You know, I I tell you guys straight how it, how it is, and the that's, truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, and I also tell them I say, look, I'm not. A, I, I don't want you to look at me as like a teacher because the idea that you have a teacher is someone who cares and wants you to be. Well, so you don't care? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not that I don't care. It's just that I'm trying to get you ready to become a professional. Right. I'm not here to make sure you did your homework. I'm not here to ask you why you didn't come to class last week. That's not why I'm here. What I'm here is to give you professional feedback and advice and share my experience with you mm-hmm. to get you ready. You know, because if if you just go through a program and everybody is just like, oh, that's great. Oh, you did a great job. Oh, that's wonderful. And everything's out of focus and it's dark. You know, <laughs> how does that actually help you? Be, no, it's not. So then you're going to show your portfolio that all your professors, instructors, whatever you want to call them, have all, you know, given you a praise for. And then someone professionally looks at your portfolio and says, is this a joke? that's not going to feel so good. And then you're going to think back to all your teachers going, why didn't they ever tell me? Right. You know, and I would much rather be that kind of uh, hard ass up front to where you're not that likable, but at least I'm going to be honest and truthful with you. And when it comes to uh, parenting, like Eric was talking about, yeah, it's like me having to stop and say, look, by the time you get here to college, you should already know that the world revo- doesn't revolve around you. Mm-hmm. That when you're sick or you can't show up, we're still continuing on class and I'm not going to go back to help you because you weren't here or because you decided to go on that ski trip or whatever it was. It was yeah. Not that I'm not understanding. I'm like, look, life happens. I know sometimes you got caught at work or you had this. You know how I'm understanding? I don't lock my door because if I taught the way I really wanted to teach if I really didn't give a shit about the students at exactly 6 p.m. when my class starts I would lock the door and put a note up that says class already started see you next week but I don't go that far Eric that's how he was taught that's how I was taught (laughs) Eric you don't do that and I pay twenty thousand dollars a semester (laughs) but but we need it kind of worked it well it, it Kind of did. We, you were never late to class. That's true. You grew up in that moment. You know, I, I never had. I mean, again, except for being late for this podcast, <laughs> I wasn't late. I was here. The door was locked. I had to call the guy. <laughs> uh, just on like a side, what's your favorite movies, or what's your okay. favorite movie? You want to start? Uh, sure. My my. Well, here, let's do. What's wh- your favorite movie and why? You, you do I one, can't. then I'll do one. You do one, then I'll do one until we Perfect. collapse. Okay. Oh, but so we what's your favorite movie and why? 
I called him at 259. <laughs> it's right here. On, it's I was not late. Don't show the camera. <laughs> show look two two fifty nine. <laughs> FYI. Okay. Um, you Point know, taken. The thing the thing is when it comes to saying what your favorite film is. You know what's interesting? I ask that question all the time, and it's not a fair question because. It really depends on your mood and the. Could we life. amend your question to what's your favorite movie today? Okay, okay what's perfect. your favorite movie today? <laughs> the Godfather. Why? Well, because it's such a compelling story that, and, and it's so rich, full of characters. It was beautifully shot. Um, Probably the best writing ever. Some of the best writing ever. Yeah, I, I mean, what's not like to like about it? Not to mention, and it's in the psyche right now because it's the 50th year anniversary. And you take a look, this film was made in 1972. And it still holds up to this day as far as all the techniques go. From the acting to the cinematography, to the way it was directed, the production design. It was just an amazing film. And when you have a story that's so rich and full, and compelling like that. So The Godfather, for me. That is a good one. Um, right now, I'm I'm still studying Dune oh. by Denis Villeneuve. The new one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, a couple mm-hmm. years old now. Right. Um, really? Wait, when did it come out? 2020? 2019, I think. Wow. I thought 2020. No, 2020. Is it 2020? Okay. Maybe 21. I, I mean, uh, why do I love it? Uh, I think Hans Zimmer is a big reason why I love the movie, but I really, I'm a sucker for his large scale science fiction approach to everything he's done. I mean, I think, I don't know. It's got, it's, it, it gives me back that magic I had as a kid when you see this, like, you know, really important movie in your, your upbringing that you kind of like almost a Star Wars effect. Did you read the book? I uh, I did as a kid. Um and I and I definitely was horrified by the David Lynch version. I remember <laughs> I had nightmares by yeah. by the Baron in that movie. I know, right? Dude, he had like warts and I was this is crazy. I was, you know, not Steam flying not around ready in for his that. underwear and a diaper. Right. But um Dune, I mean He's hooked me. I want to be there in that future. I don't know. I, I think, I guess I just, he's so good at engaging me. All right. That's last. Why I love it. It's perfect. I like your answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I think this is only a start. We have to come back. Oh, yeah. You guys definitely have to come back for sure. But yeah. um, as a tradition, I always ask this last question is what's the best advice you would give to a filmmaker? Oh, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um. You know, everybody ha- everybody takes their right. time for uh, this question. Everybody okay. takes their I time. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a tricky one, but... It is. Know, the best advice I'll borrow that I was given from a guy named Vilmos Zygmunt, who was not nice to me. <laughs> Be patient. Be patient. Period. I mean... You're not going to make your portfolio in a 16-week semester. You're not, you're not going to become great in two years. So just be patient. All of the things you're doing are adding up, adding up to something bigger, mm-hmm. a means to an end. And, you know, you just have to be patient with it. Right. You're leapfrogging around, doing jobs that you maybe you don't love, but you're doing it because you can, because you have skill. So just be patient. You're going to get your crack at doing what you would really want. So I, I want people to try to remember to be patient. Hmm. I turn it to Mr. Michael. <laughs> uh, I, I would say have a growth mindset. You know, Understand that you're only limited by your own limitations. And so always approach everything, not just filmmaking, but just really remember that uh, failure is just a learning experience. And you need to, to really, if, if, you, if you really kind of believe in that philosophy, you'll never stop. You'll continue to go, mm-hmm. which takes patience, of course. Yeah. But, you know, 
I would say growth mindset and just just realize that everything is, is no such thing as talent. It's just a, there's trained and untrained. It's a skill set. That's all it is. And the more that you practice, the better you're going to become at it. It's taken me a long time to try to you know to restrain using the word fail. And it's, I, I, I I try to make myself but I mean you, you feel a little better to. because they're discovered. I mean, you have to fail in order to, to succeed. Is it failing, though, or is it teaching you exactly what not to do? Well, exactly. I think this yeah. is just syntax, right? We're, just, we're using uh, this, a because different I mean, word to describe again, the same meaning. I had a great conversation. Failing up is a thing. That Well, that's all the execs <laughs> in Hollywood. Fail, <laughs> they, failing up? They fail yes. up. Yes. I guess. Okay. By yeah. trying your best, I mean, we're, not getting the results you want, but right. you keep at it. You keep trying. You keep. I mean, I mean we're, we are our worst critics. I mean, everybody knows that. But, I mean, I think – I mean, we don't want to fail, but we have to in order to, to be able to, you know, grow. It's the, the journey. In the industry. Yeah. It's the journey, my friend. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Hey, uh, thanks, I hope, Kareem. This I hope, was, uh, I hope to bring you guys letting, back. Thanks for letting um, us. Yeah. I Next time, you. cocktails you, for sure. You oh, said I you were going to bring wine. What happened to that? No, I said I was going to bring Jameson. Jameson.